Here's the Bodhi plot from the data sheet of an op-amp. What does it mean? What are the phase and gain? Where did the plot come from? Don't worry if you're feeling lost in all those lines. I'll walk you through the diagram, and then we'll explore all the beautiful math that lets you really unlock the secrets of the Bodhi diagram. Even though there's only one graph here, there's actually two sets of vertical axes, one for the phase and one for the gain. Phase and gain aren't complicated concepts on their own. Phase is how far a sinusoid has been shifted along a horizontal axis relative to its period. Phase is typically measured in degrees. A phase shift of 360 degrees corresponds to a shift of one period. Gain is how much the magnitude of the signal has increased, usually measured in decibels, or dB. Suppose a signal quadruples in magnitude. It has undergone a gain of 6 decibels, calculated as 10 log 10 of the final amplitude divided by the starting amplitude. Irritatingly, sometimes it is calculated with a multiplier of 20 instead of 10, so watch out for that. Notice a gain isn't a characteristic of a signal by itself, like amplitude. Instead, it is a measure of how a signal's amplitude has changed. This is really what the Bode diagram tells us, how a signal changes when passing through a system. But there's more. The Bode plot doesn't illustrate how just one signal changes, but how signals of various frequencies are affected. The Bode diagram game plot depicts how the magnitude of signals change as they pass through the system. In this op amp circuit, low frequencies are amplified. At 100 kHz, signals are amplified by nearly 20 decibels. That's an amplification of 100 times. At higher frequencies, the gain diminishes. At a frequency of 300 kHz, the gain drops to 5 dB, equivalent to an amplitude multiplier of about 3.2. This trend continues, and we reach 0 dB at about 700 kHz, implying no gain or loss in the signal. Notice that both the frequency and gain axes are logarithmic. This is typical in a Bode diagram. The logarithmic axes can be confusing, but make a broad range of frequencies and gains intelligible from a single graph. Look how difficult it is to read the high frequency behavior from the same data plotted on linear axes. At high frequencies, this op amp feedback circuit doesn't even produce a gain. Signals lose amplitude, diminishing by 20 dB at 4 MHz. That's a hundredfold amplitude loss. Often, we're mainly interested in the game plot, but let's not forget about the phase. Unlike the gain, the vertical axis of the phase plot is linear, but is plotted against the same logarithmic frequency axis. For this op-amp circuit, there's a 90 degree phase shift at 100 kHz. That means the output signal is offset from the input signal by one fourth the period to the left. Note that I'm ignoring the gain characteristics to simplify the illustration. As frequencies increase, the phase approaches zero. At 3 MHz, the input and output signals are in phase. If you're interested in Bode plots, you're probably already familiar with the Fourier transform. You can use a Fourier transform to calculate the frequency content of a signal. A common way to plot the frequency content of a signal is using magnitude and phase plots. But you might wonder, how are these different from the gain and phase plots of the Bode diagram? Let's return to our op-amp example. An input signal, Vn, is applied to the circuit. The op-amp amplifies the signal, resulting in Vout. The frequency content of the input signal can be analyzed by plotting the magnitude and phase of its Fourier transform. This input signal has peaks at 400 kHz and 2 MHz. 
The output signal shares the 400 kHz peak, but the 2 MHz peak has diminished. This is a typical use of the Fourier transform to compare the frequency content of signals. The Bode diagram, on the other hand, doesn't characterize individual signals. Instead, it illustrates the relationship between input and output signals of a given system. At 400 kHz, the Bode diagram shows an amplification. This is what we observed in the frequency content of the output signal. Overall, this Bode diagram illustrates that low frequencies are amplified while high frequencies are attenuated. Compare the Fourier magnitude plots of the input and output signals, and you'll notice those changes. It's worth noting here that Bode diagrams aren't valid for any system. They are only valid for linear time invariant systems, usually abbreviated LTI. A linear system requires that the effect of the system applied to separate signals is equivalent to the linear combination of the signals affected separately. Time invariance requires that the effect of the system on an equal input signal at a later time will be the same. So how do you know if your system is LTI? Usually, it's because you've written the differential equation for your system and it's linear and has no explicit time dependence. Here's a couple examples of non-LTI systems. Explicit time dependence in sine of t. Non-linear cubic term in x of t cubed. You can't really understand a Bode plot until you know how it was created. In this chapter of the video, I'll build up the Bode diagram for this RC circuit, starting from scratch. This will involve some math, but don't worry, I'll walk you through the steps. Let's start by deriving the ODE for the output voltage. Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the net voltage around the closed loop will be zero. We're interested in the voltage drop across the capacitor, because that gives our output voltage, so we want to write everything in terms of VC. Using the relationship between voltage and current in a capacitor, and the fact that the current is constant in this simple circuit, we can rewrite the voltage across the resistor in terms of Vc. We don't need to rewrite Vs because we're assuming it's an arbitrary input voltage signal, unrelated to the dynamics of the RC filter. Let's look at a solution of this ODE, assuming an input sinusoid with a frequency of 10 Hz. If I was back in undergrad, I'd use my favorite technique with complex exponentials to solve this. But this isn't a video about solving ODEs, so let me just write out the solution. I've written the solution for an RC circuit with a 100 kiloohm resistor and a 1 microfarad capacitor. If we plot the solution Vc and the input signal Vs, we'll notice that the magnitude has diminished and the phase has shifted. The phase shift of the sinusoid is approximately negative 81 degrees. The gain is around negative 8 dB. Notice that the phase and gain are calculated only from the periodic term in the solution. We ignore the transient term when computing the gain and phase because it has no effect on the long-term behavior of the system. This exponential decay transient is particularly short-lived, affecting only the first couple of cycles. The phase and gain of the long-term periodic behavior of this 10 Hz signal represent a single point in the Bode plot. We could fill in the rest of the Bode plot by varying the input frequency and computing the phase and gain from the ODE solution but there's actually a much cleaner way to construct the Bode diagram analytically. Let me show you. Transfer functions are a standard tool for analyzing LTI systems, like our RC circuit ODE. There are two steps to compute the transfer function. First, we'll take the Laplace transform of the ODE. It sounds hard, but there are simple rules for the Laplace transform that you can find in a table that makes it quite easy. 
Applying these rules yields the Laplace domain form of the ODE. The transfer function is the ratio of the output signal VC to the input signal VS in the Laplace domain. A little algebra, and we're there. The RC circuit transfer function models both the transient and long-term behavior of the system. Restricting the Laplace domain independent variable s to its imaginary term i omega limits our analysis to the long-term periodic behavior. The gain is calculated by computing the magnitude of the complex transfer function and then taking its log. The phase is the depicted angle in the complex plane. It can be computed using the arctangent. To construct the Bode diagram, we simply plug in a range of frequencies and plot the resulting phase and gain. Here's the resulting Bode plot for this RC circuit. You can see that the ODE solution phase and gain are equal to the phase and gain calculated using the transfer function. This RC circuit is a low-pass filter because it attenuates high frequencies but allows low frequencies to pass. Here's another way you can create a Bode diagram. Probe a physical system with multiple frequencies. If you record the inputs and outputs, you can compute the frequency response and use the result to plot the Bode diagram gain and phase. Here, I've created an RC circuit with a 10 kiloohm resistor and a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. Here is the assembled circuit. Let's try probing the circuit with a chirp signal. I'll generate the chirp in the Arduino IDE. Here's the line where it's computed and here's where it's written to the digital-to-analog converter. To record the inputs and outputs for processing, I'll use a simple Python script. Here's where we read from the serial port. Here's a video of the recorded input and output signals in a fixed time window. The input chirp signal starts at 1 Hz and ramps linearly to 1 kHz. The output signal shows gradually increasing attenuation. Plotting both signals together illustrates this nicely. It's just a few lines of code to compute the fast Fourier transforms, commonly called FFTs, of these discrete time signals. The input chirp signal covers a broad range of input frequencies. The output signal has a similar frequency range but has been modified by the RC filter. If we take the ratio of the output Fourier transform to the input, we obtain the same result as the transfer function frequency response. If we compute the phase and gain of this ratio, we'll have the Bode plot phase and gain curves. Here are the plotted curves. You can see that after 1 kHz, where the chirp signal stopped, there's no usable data but in the rest of the range, we see the characteristic low-pass filter curve. Compare that to the analytic Bode plot for this circuit. Surprise! They actually match! I hope this video helped you to understand Bode plots. Please let me know what other content you'd like to see in the future.